And now a congressional race that could be a harbinger of elections to come this fall. In 2018, President Trump won big in Pennsylvania's 18th congressional district outside of Pittsburgh. But polls ahead of tomorrow's special election there show the Republican Rick Saccone in a dead heat with Democrat Connor Lamb. It is an early and critical test of enthusiasm for both political parties. Lisa Desjardins just returned from western Pennsylvania and brings us this report. It's not yet 9 a.m. and this custom crate manufacturing company in Scottsdale, Pennsylvania is already buzzing. Owner Jack Davis says business is too. Last year was one of the best years we had. Jack is a Republican, and like a majority of people in this district, voted for President Donald Trump. After the first year, he's actually turned out to be a far better president than I even anticipated. If he ran again, I'd vote for him again. That makes his choice in tomorrow's special election an easy one. I'll vote for Rick Saccone. A reason being that the fact is he has aligned himself with Trump. So I think we need to continue doing what Trump has started. Pennsylvania's 18th district sits in the southwestern corner of the state where Pittsburgh's suburbs give way to industrial towns and farmland, and it's reliably red. The district has voted Republican in every presidential election since 2000. It's also been represented in Congress by the same Republican, Tim Murphy, for the last 15 years. But he resigned in October after reports that he asked a one-time mistress to have an abortion. When we vote, we win. When we vote, we win. This time, though, lifelong Democrats like Denny Craigett see a chance for a pickup. I'm supporting Connor Lamb. He has talked to our unions. One of the big things with his opponent is he is basically anti-union. Denny is an officer with the local United Steelworkers in Cannonsburg. He I'm, says the president I'm looms large I'm in his choice tomorrow. Me, I must admit, after the 2016 debacle and seeing Donald Trump win the presidency because people want to change, that has made me rise up again, I guess. This special election pits Republican State Representative Rick Saccone against Democrat Connor Lamb. Saccone plays up his alignment with President Trump, while Lamb barely mentions his name. Both are military veterans and in a district that loves hunting. We should uh, allow our people to exercise their Second Amendment rights. Served four years in the Marines, still loves to shoot. Both support the Second Amendment. The race is attracting a national flood of money, both for the candidates themselves and for outside groups who support or oppose them. Rick Saccone is dangerously out of touch. He'd be one of Nancy Pelosi's sheep. By the time the polls close tomorrow, by one estimate, these candidates and groups will have spent more than $11 million on TV ads alone. It's also attracted high-profile surrogates. Last week, former Vice President Joe Biden hit the campaign trail for Lamb. Get out there and work. Help this man win. Just this weekend, President Trump made his second visit to the district in just as many months. Vote for Rick. He'll never, ever disappoint you. The Republican in chief touted his new steel and aluminum tariffs in this industrial corner of the state. Steel is back. It's going to be back, too. Steel is back and aluminum is back. Mr. Trump won this congressional district overwhelmingly by about 20 points. The question now is whether the enthusiasm for President Trump will convert into enthusiasm for a different Republican. Outside the rally for Saccone, locals said it's not the candidate driving their vote so much, it's more the R next to his name. Uh, I think it's important that we uh, do what we can to elect him and to keep it a Republican seat. Anything to put Nancy Pelosi out of office. <laughs> I just don't think people know him. And at this point, nobody seems to trust anybody. So if you don't know them, like everybody knew Donald Trump from just him being him. But who's Rick Saccone? To opponents, that is an enthusiasm gap and an opportunity. The more that they are imagining Tuesday, the more likely they vote. It's three days before the election, and the group Voice of Westmoreland is crammed into a dining room, about to go door to door in a final push for Lamb. So we got 
Greensburg, Hempfield, and Youngwood. Just six people a year ago, they now have more than 100 members. You guys are driving for the polls? Co-founder Angela Aldis knows President Trump is popular with her neighbors, and that's become a central part of her group's strategy. For us, this isn't a thing about, you know, we're out here opposing Trump. Um, while we don't agree with a lot, maybe most of what he stands for, um, if he weren't president tomorrow, Paul Ryan would still be there and he would still be trying to gut Medicaid. That's how you kind of are able to have conversations with people in this area. Even if they support the president, you can still have so much in common to say, hey, we're, they're, they're not working for us. They're not standing up for us. There is an underlying theme here, even for supporters of both candidates. They generally distrust longtime politicians in both parties. Sometimes you look at the Democrat and Republicans, it's kind of like a beer. The Democrats are Budweiser and the Republicans are Bud Light. After a few beers, you can't tell them apart. On the other side of the district, Denny and his longtime buddies share a beer and the same skepticism. It's all about money, it's all about power, and they really don't care about the people, and I'll be truthful. Sometimes I feel that way about some Democrats also. Bye guys. But here's what's different. New groups like Angela's are emerging and trying to shift the conversation one door at a time. Oh, hi. Democrats are counting on that enthusiasm tomorrow, but Angela is looking past this election to the long term. Wednesday, March 14th, we're all gonna sleep. <laughs> finally, <laughs> after doing so much for this election. And the Lamb campaign will pack up and they'll head out and their office will be closed and we'll still be here. Like, we're not going anywhere. But expect the signs and the candidates to return soon enough. This is a fight for a temporary congressional seat with just eight months until November's election. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins in Greensburg, Pennsylvania.